Hi, it's Miss STEM Tutor here, where we try to get that 100. Today, we're going to talk about product rule and quotient rule. Let's talk about product rule, right? If you are given a function y, and it is equal to two functions multiplied together, like f of x and g of x, when you're asked to take the derivative of y, you're going to have to use product rule, right? So essentially, you are going to have f prime of x, which is the derivative of f of x, multiplied by the function g of x plus f of x times the derivative of g of x, right here. So that's what the product rule is. So let's do a question for a product rule. So if we have h of x is equal to x times square root of 4 minus x squared, what is the derivative of h of x? So in this case, we see that we have a multiplication sign, so we are going to use product rule. First, I will always like to identify my two functions that are being multiplied together. So right here, this is my f of x. And then right here, this is my g of x, right? Because the multiplication sign is between them. So I always like to write out the rule. So if we have h prime of x is equal to f prime of x times g of x plus f of x times g prime of x. This helps to look at it better. So to find f prime of x, let's take a look. f prime of x is equal to 1, right? Because the derivative of x is equal to 1. And that's why I like to label it so you can see everything more clearly. g of x is already the original function, f of x as well. So let's look at g prime of f x, right? So I always like to write the function out in the exponential form, like 4 minus x squared to the 1 half. That makes it clear, right? So if we are taking the derivative of this, we are actually going to have to use chain rule, which I will also talk about in a different video. So g prime of x is equal to 1 half, 4 minus x squared to the negative 1 half, right? Because that's how you take derivative and you multiply by chain rule, so negative 2x. In this case, it will simplify to negative x times 4 minus x squared to the negative 1 half. All right, now we can add them all together. So let's write here. So put it back together, 1 times g of x, so 4 minus x squared plus f of x, x times right here, right, g prime of x. So negative x times 4 minus x squared to the negative 1 half. Let's simplify. You get square root of 4 minus x squared minus x squared over square root of 4 minus x squared, right? Because you're moving the negative exponent to the bottom. And, you know, that's how it looks like now. But can we simplify it further? Of course we can. So if we try to get common denominator, right? So this would actually become 4 minus x squared over square root of 4 minus x squared. This is the first term. Second term, we would still get x squared over square root of 4 minus x squared. Simplify it, we get 4 minus 2x squared over square root of 4 minus x squared as our final answer, right? So this is an example of a product rule mixed with some chain rule. We, I will talk about chain rule in the other video. Okay, so let's try product rule again with our second example. In this case, we are given h of x is equal to x cubed times parentheses x fourth minus 2x. Again, like I said, I always like to identify my function. So x cubed is f of x. And whatever is in the parentheses is my g of x, right? Because the multiplication sign is right here. So, again, let's write out our function. How will we find a derivative? I hope you remember it, right? So f prime of x times g of x plus f of x times g prime of x, right? It's always the first derivative and then the function. And then again, we flip it again, the first function and the second derivative. So that's what that is, and let's do it independently, right? So f prime of x, x cubed's derivative is 3x squared, right? And then we see normal function of g of x, whatever, and we see f of x, whatever. So let's solve for g prime of x. g prime of x inside this function, right? We see 4x third minus 2, right? Perfect. So let's put them together. 
um, h prime of x is equal to 3x squared, f of prime, right? Multiplied by g of x, which is the original function. That's why we like to label things to make everything clear, right? f of x, x cubed, times g prime of x, which is right here, right? 4x cubed minus 2. Now, we just need to simplify. So here, we get 3 x to the 6, right? When we multiply exponents, we add the exponent. Minus 6 x cubed plus 4 x 6 minus 2 x cubed, right? So, oh, that equal sign is looking a little wobbly. Oh, again, here we go. All right. So, like terms, combine like terms, right? x 6, x 6. So, you get 7 x to the 6, and right here, that is your other like term, x cubed, right? So you get negative 8 x cubed. So this is your answer, and that's our second product rule. All right, so what is a quotient rule, right? If you are given y is equal to f of x divided by g of x, right? And they ask you to find a derivative of y, you are going to use a quotient rule because you have two functions divided against each other. So in this case, the formula is going to be right here in purple, which is f prime of x, so the derivative of the top times the original of the bottom minus the original of the top times the derivative of the bottom, all over the function on the bottom square, right? There's some patterns, right? You always do one's derivative and then the original function, and then the original function, the first one's derivative, and then all over the denominator original function square. Okay, so let's look at an example of quotient rule. Here you have h of x is equal to 6x squared over 2 minus x. Again, I like to label my functions. Top is obviously f of x. Bottom is g of x, right? So again, let's write out our function. So it's the derivative of the top times the origin of the bottom minus, because it's divide, right? f of x times g prime of x all over the denominator squared. So g prime, gx squared. Okay, here we go. So let's find f prime of x first. f prime of x is 12x. And then we look at g of x. g of x is, what's the derivative? Right, if you said negative one, good job. And let's plug that all back in, right? That's pretty simple. So 12x, times g of x with g of x, original function, right? Minus the original function, which is 6x squared, times the derivative of the bottom. So that is going to be a negative 1, all over 2 minus x squared. So in this case, let's simplify, right? 24x minus 12x squared plus 6x squared, all over... 2 minus x. We could just leave the bottom right there. And we get, on top, we get negative 12x squared plus 6x squared. So we get negative 6x squared plus 24x all over 2 minus x squared. So that's the derivative of h of x. Here you go. That's how quotient rule works, right? You always want to like I always do, right? Label your f of x, your g of x, write out the formula, right? And then you do all of the little derivatives, and then you plug it back into the equation to solve. Okay, last question of quotient rule again. So here we go. Grab out your pencil, paper, maybe try this on your own. All right, I'm assuming you gave that a try. First, what is our first step? Right, we have to identify our f of x and our g of x just to make life so much easier. And then we write out the original formula, which is f prime x, g of x minus f of x, g prime of x, all over g of x squared, right? Remember, the denominator's original function is always squared. And on top, it's just like, look at this actually, guys, look at it right here. F prime, isn't it just look like the product rule, except that it's a minus instead of a plus, right? So remember, when you, prod, when you multiply, it's going to be a plus. 
when you divide, it's going to be a minus, and then all of that divided by the square of the denominator's original function. So let's try this question. I'm guessing you already tried. So what do we do first? We find the derivative of each of the labeled functions. So f of prime x, what is this? It's 3 plus 4x third. And g of x over here, what is g prime of x? It is 4x. Perfect. What's the next step? We plug it into this original function, right? So let me get my red pen back. Let's do this. So f prime of x, we plug this in, 3 plus 4x cubed, right? That's why I like to set it up this way. I like to label, and then I like to find, I like to write out my formula, right? And then I like to find each of the derivatives and then simply plug it back in and simplify. That makes things so much faster and easier. So that's our f prime of x. g of x is 2x squared plus 1, original function. And then the original function of f of x is going to be 3x plus x to the fourth and g prime of x is going to be 4x it's a big number on top right all over g of x squared original function squared so there we go right and you're going to simplify this top thing right that looks humongous so distribute so we get 6x squared plus 3 plus 8x fifth plus 4x cubed minus, right? You need to make sure everything is parentheses, inside the parentheses. So you get 12x squared plus 4x fifth. All of that, oh my gosh, over 2x squared plus 1 squared. Okay, so let's simplify this top thing, right? Common like terms. Um, we see ax fifth x fifth then we see like um we see six x square six x square and then we have a cubed or whatever so if you simplify this it's going to end up to be four x fifth plus four x cubed minus six x square plus three all over two x square plus one square so this is going to be what the h prime of x equal to, right? Here we go. All right, let's do a quick recap. Product rule is when you have two things multiplied together, like so, and you're just going to have the original function of the first and the derivative of the other, and then you flip that around, right? So in each case, you're going to have an original function and then the derivative of the other function, right? So again, when you multiply, it's add similarly, it's the same equation for the numerator of the quotient rule, except it's minus. So just remember, when you multiply, you plus, you add. When you divide, you subtract, you minus, right? And then it's just the same thing as the product rule right here. And you just divide it all over the square of the denominators, original function, right? So that's basically what they are. And try to keep them in mind, right? Again, like we said, when we solve these questions, right, you first label what is f of x, what is g of x, and then you write out the rule that applies in its original form, like this or like this, right? And then you find the derivative of each function. Lastly, you plug everything you know into the equation and simplify. That makes the whole process so much quicker, okay? So here's a summary of the steps you should follow when you try to solve derivatives with product rule and quotient rule, right? So first, identify which rule, whether it is a product or a quotient rule. Then you identify which one's the f of x, which one's the g of x, right? And then for me, at least, it's so helpful if you write out the original rule equation, right, with just the f of x, g of x. And then you find the derivative of each of these functions, right, because you every rule in the original equation, you need these. And then lastly, you plug everything into the original equation. Lastly, and finally, you simplify. And this just makes your life so much easy if you follow this set of rules. If you enjoyed this video or you liked it, you know, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more content that's coming. It's Miss STEM Tutor here. Let's go get that 100.